my thoughts were really bad. I was like, if I cannot beat, it, beat this insomnia, I don't even want to be around anymore. Like, nobody understands me. I didn't know what to do. I felt so hopeless. And you really feel lonely with it. Like, it made me feel like I was being crazy. I read your book maybe in one week and I understand it everything. But you have to experience it. It's kind of the same as within football. Like sometimes, you know, the trainer explains something to you, but to master it, you have to train for weeks, months, sometimes even years before you know how to how to do it. And that's how I also saw insomnia. Like I have to train my mind to not be afraid of wakefulness. And every single time that I thought I could not do it, I survived, you know. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to yet another really special Talking Song episode. We have Naomi with us. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Did I say your name right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Very well. Well, so glad that you're here. And for those of you who are wondering, like, how did this particular interview come about? Well, you were actually my client in bedtime a while back. And then you sent me a message saying like, hey, uh, I think I'm ready to share my story to, you know, help others on the path. And I said, of course, so excited about this. So without further ado... Tell us in your words, uh, how, how did you start having trouble sleeping? I was a professional athlete. I played uh, football in the Netherlands. Um, and my first time with insomnia was before like a very big tournament. Um, I think I was 18 then. I'm 25 now. Um, I had to play for the national team of the Netherlands. And uh, it was a very big tournament and I was a bit nervous and that night I didn't sleep at all like zero minutes and that never happened before so I was thinking what is happening right now but okay it was okay I told my coach I didn't find it happens sometimes uh, nothing to worry about um, just take a rest today and we'll see tomorrow um, and that's the night after I still couldn't uh, sleep. <laughs> so that was the moment when I panicked a bit, like what's happening? Because yeah, I've never experienced something like this before. But I was thinking that maybe because of the tournament, I was nervous that that was the problem, you know? Um, so it was five or six days. Um, the tournament was five or six days, but I could not sleep the third day also. So that was, yeah, a moment for me where I was really panicking and um, yeah, I told my coach, I cannot sleep. And they were thinking like, what do you mean you cannot sleep? Because we're training every single day, you know? So physically you are tired, but I could not turn my mind off. So I was thinking it's because of this, yeah, this big tournament and I'm just nervous. So, I also could not finish it because I was so tired that I just went home back to my parents and back to the to club football, you know, because this was with the national team and I went back to my club. So a couple of days go past and yeah, it starts to settle. I can sleep again. So that was fine. But then another big tournament <laughs> comes and I was thinking, hmm, last time I didn't sleep well. I hope it will not happen this time. And of course, uh, yeah, it happened again. So at that point, I was thinking I can only not sleep when I have like a big tournament or with a national team. That's the only moment that I cannot sleep. But so that was fine. But then after a while, some months go by and I start to think, what if I cannot sleep before training? What if I cannot sleep before or after a game? I have to recover. So what if I cannot sleep then? So it started with not being able to sleep yeah, when I have something really big. But then it also happened before a normal training session or after a game. Yeah, and it's so on, you know? Um, so yeah, that was uh, how it started for me and how it progressed from only 
not sleeping for big things to not being able to sleep for normal days for me. Yeah. Um, and oh, I don't even know when this was again. It was like six years ago, but um, at that point, yeah, you're so tired. Like I was taking sleeping pills because if you tell your coach, like I cannot sleep in the, in the world of sports, they give you a fast solution. So they say, here, take some sleeping pills because they need you to yeah, give your best on the pitch. So I got sleeping pills, but yeah, it makes you very drowsy. So imagine being not able to sleep and having to give like your best on the pitch physically. Like some days I would be so dizzy, not being able to focus. I could feel my breathing really high. Like I was already exhausted before the training has started. So yeah, that was uh, not not nice, not nice at all. Um, and then this went on for a while and then I got injured because I was, yeah, I was not sleeping and I was playing very tired. So I tore my ACL. Um, so you're nine months out. But at that time, I tore my ACL and I was like, oh, yeah, forget it. Doesn't matter if I sleep, don't sleep. So of course I slept perfectly fine the whole nine months because I was chill. I was like, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not on the pitch. Doesn't matter if I sleep. I'm just training, recovering. So those nine months, they flew by. It was fine. And then I started yeah, going back into football again. And then I noticed I was putting the pressure on sleep again. So then it, yeah, it went on like that again. So that's a bit of how this started. Um, yeah, and so, uh, thank, thanks so much for sharing this, Naomi. And then you know, sorry to to jump in, but just so we kind no, of get no the picture, like the the this this first stretch uh, bef before the ACL injury, where you mm -hmm. um you were taking sleeping medications. Were you also yeah. doing these things like, you know, supplements and changing your routine and sleep hygiene and things of that nature or not so much? Uh, yeah, I tried everything in the book, <laughs> but yeah, I, I tried sleeping in another room or uh, I thought maybe I need earplugs or uh, yeah, I tried every supplement, but supplements didn't help for me at all. Sleeping pills helped for a while, but yeah, they are also not nice to use in yeah, when you're physical, when you have to be physical every day. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of sleep efforts in that in that period. Um, but yeah, most of the time I took a sleeping pill. Yeah, yeah. But but you're still like you're still performing at a like you're know, playing soccer at a very high level. Like did yeah. did, did, did right? Yeah, <laughs> I tried to explain this. Um, to my coaches, but yeah, it was so hard to explain because nobody, yeah, some people, they have also those, this anxiety that they cannot sleep before a game or after a game when your adrenaline is really high. Um, that's normal, but I used to have it for like, like every day, like just a normal training day. And I said to them, I cannot sleep. And every day you have to fill in, like uh, before you go to training, you have to fill in how did you sleep? How are you feeling? How does your body feel? Yeah, and I was lying on everything because I just want to train. You want to be on the pitch. You want to perform because that's what you, that's your, that's your job. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so I was lying about everything. <laughs> but yeah. I tried to explain to the coach um, how I was feeling, but they they did not get get it at all yeah. so okay. it was like yeah you can try another sleeping pill you couldn't try another sleeping pill until i got injured and that took the tension of everything so... and, and, and and knowing that during that time when you were you know you had that injury did did you kind of like stop doing anything for sleep you, you didn't take any sleeping pills you didn't do nothing or there was still kind of no. no i really didn't do anything i, I don't think i took a sleeping pill at all, maybe once when I had to do a test to see if I'm, I was like fit to play again. Um, maybe then I took a sleeping pill, but not, I did it every day. 
yeah. uh, before. So, yeah. I totally get So d- during these nine months, you're like, the fear was gone. You didn't feel like you need to do anything. Yeah. It was easy. And yeah, things no that, pressure. Yeah, no pressure, right? And then, but so now, you know, we're going back into the story here. You're you're going back into soccer and you and the insomnia comes back. Yeah. Well, in the beginning, it went okay. Because I was, yeah, I was for my old club I was playing. And, and that summer, I've made the transfer to a new club. Um, but then the pressure goes again because you have to prove yourself. It's a new club. So then insomnia happened again. Uh, yeah, in the beginning it was okay. It was only for the games, but then I start to fall back in my old pattern for training, for games, for just every day, you know? Um, yeah, so I I said to my coach, I cannot, I cannot do this anymore. Like, <laughs> I have to take a break because I didn't, didn't know what was happening. Yeah. But I did know that what, what I was doing to my body was not good. Like you cannot um, train every day while you took a sleeping pill because it makes you feel so drowsy. And to give that much uh, physical um, every day, it was not good for my body. I just could feel it. Like yeah. my heartbeat, my my lungs. <laughs> I was like, I would collapse one day on the spits. So yeah. I told them, I-, I take a break. But yeah, I didn't want to because I would, I was playing soccer for already five, six years, you know, and in this whole period I had insomnia. You probably cannot imagine uh, how this was for me, but I love the game so much that I would do that to myself every single day. And sometimes it went well, like when we played a game and there was not much pressure, but when we played a game and we could win first prize, then the insomnia was uh, very bad. And sometimes I took two pills, just what I needed for the night. Yeah. Um, so I would say this is like five years later. And then I said to my coach, I cannot do this anymore. Um, I need a break. That was in February when I, I think I connected you. I don't know. No, in March, March, 2023. I took a break from playing because I just could not do this anymore. And then I fell pregnant <laughs> because yeah, I stopped playing and then I fell pregnant, but I was still very afraid of insomnia to the point where I was so afraid that I just could not even sleep when I, when there was nothing to do. Like if I had a day off, I thought I just completely lost the ability to sleep. And then I, I went on the internet and also uh, looked on Google <laughs> about uh, fatal insomnia. Uh, that was the point that I completely lost it. I went to the to the doctor and I said, I cannot sleep. I think I will die. It was that bad. So uh, yeah, the, that was last year, 2023 in February. I went to the doctor and I said, I cannot sleep. I'm, I'm going to die. So that was when they gave me like a really uh, strong medicine. I've never had that one before, but okay, I slept. So I was really happy that I slept. But I told you, then I felt pregnant. Um, yeah, with my baby in March, I find out. And then, yeah, you cannot take any pills. Yeah. So that was when I was really stressing out. And that time, um, what was that, March? Yeah, then I was really, 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 really stressing out about that. But um, after a while, yeah, I thought I cannot take these pills anymore. It was fine if I harm myself with these pills, but not to harm my baby, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Naomi. Like, when you um, this, you told your coach that, I think I need a break, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Did yeah. did you then, you know, did you feel sort of like when you had your injury that for a time there was no pressure and you slept better or that not, there was not no. so much relief? No, there was no relief. I thought if I quit now, maybe I feel the same as when I um, had those nine months of injury, but I didn't because I just was afraid of wakefulness just with everything, every day. 
and I did not recognize this. I thought it was only the football part, but I I was truly afraid of wakefulness. Yeah. So yeah. that was uh, that was something completely different. I've never experienced that feeling. I thought it was always. Uh, I thought that football was the problem. So I quit football. I thought if I quit football, things will get better. So I quit, but it did not get better. And uh, yeah, I just was afraid of wakefulness in general. Yeah, which is like I, I, I'm guessing that that's you know you, you your your mind was kind of like oh if I just quit football at least I'm gonna sleep. You you yeah. quit football. But, you know, the fear was there. And it's, it, the difference, yeah. of course, between the injury was like you had nothing to do with the injury. But now no. this time you're <laughs> sort of like, I'm quitting so I can sleep. And then there's this pressure and yeah. tension and then you don't sleep. And I'm sure then that must have been so scary because it was always like, you know, the, it was always this connection between trouble sleeping and football. And now you're seeing like, oh, my gosh, I can't sleep yeah. even if there's no football. And that, yeah, there's nothing. Right. But when I quit football, like I had nothing to do. So I think that put more pressure or more um, focus on sleep yeah. in general. Like now every minute of the day I was thinking about sleep. Like I wake up, I think about sleep and yeah, so on, you know, because you have to sleep every day. Yeah. So every minute of the day I was busy with sleeping and I was on the internet looking up what it could be or um, I thought I had an anxiety uh, problem or something or uh, yeah I was looking on the internet the whole day about how I could fix this because I didn't want to use the pills but I did not find a solution yet I was just thinking that I maybe have some problems in my head or uh, yeah I uh, I look up uh, on YouTube about uh, meditation everything but it did not help at all so uh, yeah, that was what I was doing in the period that I quit football. And was that then, was it during that time when you kind of searching, searching, searching that you found the our YouTube channel? Yeah, uh, I think because I was um, talking about sleep so much, I've, I looked, I was opening my YouTube app and I saw your uh, your channel. I think, you know, with Siri, they hear everything. Yeah. <laughs> that was... I, I, one time I just saw, um, yeah, your your channel, but I didn't click on it immediately because I think I don't want to hear any other scary story about sleep, and I was a bit skeptical about, um, yeah, what you would tell in the in the videos. But then I saw like a comment like, uh, "You have to watch Daniel if you have trouble sleeping." Um, so then I clicked on the video. Oh, I cannot remember whose video it was but it was also a recovery story and that was the moment when everything just clicked i've never heard these things before like being afraid of wakefulness or uh yeah things like that and yeah that was when i finally thought oh this makes sense like finally something that was reliable like i've never heard anything like this before so then i watched every recovery story and every um, video you had on your channel i think uh yeah so wow i'm so glad you found it and you know yeah th these machines are kind of spying on us listening to us but sometimes yeah. it kind of helps right it kind of gives us meaningful yeah. things but, but uh, i was like where was this video when i needed it <laughs> right true like back in the in the days when i was playing football now um you know the education i'm sure was like again you were kind of inspired you felt hopeful but uh that doesn't necessarily immediately lead to like sleeping easier and no and I, no right so what happened mm -hmm. then um this was i was I discovered your channel in march so i listened to a bunch of recovery stories because that g gave me hope that it would get better you know i didn't feel it but it gave me hope that it would get better um so i uh, ordered your books, <laughs> said it and forget it. And I read that book and everything completely made sense in my head, but not in, in real life. So, um, yeah, I, I read the book and I watched every video and that was, um, when I thought, yeah, I just have to face this. 
I, I can understand it, but I have to face every night. I have to face uh, the thoughts that I have and just feel it and see how I react on it. Because you learned me that that thoughts are just words in your head. They don't mean anything. It's the feeling you you gave it. You give it. But yeah, that was really, really hard. I think it took me like a year. We're now a year later. And now I can say that I'm past insomnia. I'm not afraid of it anymore. But it did not come immediately. Like those first nights, you're like still shaking in your bed. At least I was. And just all these thoughts, like what if I cannot sleep? I'm, I, I'm dying. Like if I say it out loud right now, I know it's completely delusional. <laughs> but at that point, I really thought I cannot sleep. And it made me so afraid. And I think I watched your videos every single day for like five months, six months. But I understand it, but I need, needed some reassurance. Like for me, at one point, it was not about the explaining of insomnia anymore. It was just that I was not afraid. And the videos did give me a bit of a relief. Like if I was anxious, about a night, then I just watched a video and then I, I did know, like, I will sleep one day again. Some days I didn't sleep for like three days. I only slept for an hour or something. But then the fourth day, you finally fall asleep. And that you have to try every single time when you're afraid of, of wakefulness, because you will sleep eventually. Even if you don't see it, the sleep drive always wins. And that process I had to experience every single time mm -hmm. to get past insomnia. But that's not something you can do in a week. Like I read your book maybe in one week and I understand it everything, but you have to experience it. It's kind of the same as within football. Like sometimes, you know, the trainer explains something to you, but to master it, you have to train for weeks, months, sometimes even years before you know how to how to do it. And that's how I also saw insomnia. Like I have to train my mind to not be afraid of wakefulness. And every single time that I thought I could not do it, I survived, you know. <laughs> sometimes I had like a, a day... Um, where I was nervous for something and I thought by myself, okay, I probably won't sleep at all. And when that night happened, I did sleep because in my mind, I already had like, I probably won't sleep, but I meant it. I, I truly meant it. Like I won't sleep. It's not that in the beginning I was like, okay, if I tell myself that I won't sleep, then I will sleep because you have to tell yourself that you're okay with not sleeping. But I didn't meant it. <laughs> I will, that was a secret sleep effort also. Yeah. Like telling myself that I don't care, but I was only telling myself that I don't care in order to fall asleep. But that was not working. <laughs> you have, really have to genuinely mean it. But yeah, that took me a really, really, really long time. And in the beginning, I, think, I thought it's not happening. Like I will, I will never learn how to do this, but... Yeah, I, I cannot even explain it. It's just truly don't caring anymore. But that's a really long process that does not happen overnight. Yeah, speaking of which, I want to ask you this. Though. So, you know, in March or so, you discover the the channel. You started yeah. really tuning in. You bought the book. And did was did yeah. you also um, sign up for bedtime at that time? Yeah, yeah, I did. But um, I don't think I signed up for really long. Maybe one or two months because I, I understand it, everything yeah. already. So for me, it was just going through it, like really facing it and going through it. Yeah. I think I was on bedtime only for two months because I read your book like in a week. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. In bedtime, it's basically a bit. Um, yeah. You also explain how, it, how insomnia works and all the paradoxes you have to face. So, yeah, I understand it with everything. So I was like, I don't need to be on that time anymore. I just need to face this. 
Yeah. And every time you discover something new, I don't know, like when you get afraid of sleep efforts, I think everything is a sleep effort right now. But yeah, it was only two months for me on bedtime. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, on I, I remember you from, you know, you being a client there. And what I remember is very aligned with what you said that when you sent messages, yeah. It, yeah. it was almost like you were just telling me what was going on and you already had information <laughs> and everything. And I was like, yep, you got it. That's true. You know, you, yeah. you already had a lot of understanding. Yeah. So now, and I think a lot of people that hear this will be like, okay, Naomi says like, okay, you got to sort of face it. But what does yeah. she mean by that? I think just lay in your bed every night and let those thoughts come just every single thought you have, just let it come, but don't necessarily put a feeling to it. Like you probably every night will think, I cannot sleep tonight. It's just how people with insomnia probably think. I don't know, for me, it was like that. Like every night I was like afraid. And then I go upstairs, I go brush my teeth. I could feel my heartbeat, like uh, being in a bed, closing my eyes and just not being able to sleep. Just, I don't know, just laying there. What I mean with saying when you face it, you have to just allow those thoughts to come, allow those feelings to come. Even if your heart is beating through your chest, you just have to allow it every single day until it gets less power. And that sounds really easy, I know, but it took me a year. So don't expect expect it to be gone within a year or don't expect that you accept those feelings by tomorrow because I don't think that's possible. Um, but that's what I mean with allowing those feelings. Yeah, yeah you I have to that... allow those feelings in order to recover. Absolutely. And... Uh... Uh, you know, there's no other way. <laughs> there is no other way. And it, like, you know, the, the you, you know, you use the football analogy, like you can understand what your coach means theoretically, but you have to do like maybe a lot of training before that actually becomes yeah. like, you know, sinks in. Right. And with insomnia, yeah. I think it's, it's the same, but in almost reverse, it's kind of unlearning because like, yeah, when we're scared, yeah. we it's learn so many things, right? Yeah. But that's, that's the hard part because yeah, how do I say this? Um, you can tell yourself that you don't care, but you probably do care. But yeah, that's the hard part of unlearning. Yeah, because learning, yeah, in a way, it's like learning is is proactive. Like you do stuff to learn, but yeah, unlearning is same, more about like right. Yeah. yeah, that's the same as on the on the football field. I think that's why it was so hard for me to uh, beat insomnia because yeah. Uh, the people that have insomnia, they are all also very hardworking. How do you say that in the book? Uh, yeah, driven, type A, hardworking. Type A, yeah, type yeah. A. Type A, yeah. I think everybody who has insomnia is type A. You want to really go for something, so you try harder, try harder, try harder. And that's the hard part about insomnia, because you have to try less. Yeah. Now, but for me, that was really hard, because I, I, train every, I was training every day, and every day you want to do better. And I was like, if I only can get this insomnia to to disappear, I was looking for the solution for it, but there truly was no solution. Yeah. Now, um, I want to ask you this, like, uh, you know, let's say somewhere in, let's say, the early part of last year, you know, you had yeah. read the book, you had a lot of understanding, you had done a little bit of, you spent some time at bedtime and you were like, mm -hmm. I just have to face this. From then on, was it kind of like what was what was it like from then? Was it like sometimes you had kind of a real insight and things got easier, or was it more like a a bumpy, bumpy journey where things kind of slowly well, get better? As I told you in March, I also fell pregnant with my first son, and I think that really was like a blessing in disguise for me because I had a reason to quit sleeping pills. I told myself so many times I will stop taking sleeping pills, but I never ever did it because I didn't care if, if, yeah, if I took a sleeping pill, I only cared if I would sleep, but 
I think everybody knows when you are pregnant, it's not ideal to take any um, uh, pills or whatsoever. So that was a moment for me that I really quit and I didn't take the sleeping pills anymore. But that was really, 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 really hard for me. Yeah. Like I was so scared that I could not do it. But in my mind, I was like, okay, if I don't sleep today, it's fine. Normally, I would take a sleeping pill if I didn't sleep one night because I really wanted to sleep the, the other night. But because that was not possible, um, yeah, I really learned that sleep drive will always win. But if I was not pregnant at that time, I don't think I would put the sleeping pills away. Yeah. So I don't know. That saved me a bit. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we, we were talking earlier about like, you know, what do we mean by like facing our fears? And in a way, like taking yeah. sleeping pills it is something we do like to feel a little safer to like, you know, yeah. protect ourselves, right? So now it's you're fully facing the fear in this point, yeah. right? Yeah, there was no other thing I could do. Yeah, I could take them, but I don't know. I felt so guilty every time um, only yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and in your book, you also say like, you cannot, um, you have to put them away forever or you just take it every night. Like, yeah, right. Uh, like, um, how do you say it? Or you just take them every night. So I made the choice to just, uh, yeah, put them away. And so, yeah, you, you're pregnant, your baby's growing and, yeah. you know, you, you're seeing that no matter what, eventually sleep drive always sleeps and eventually always yeah. sleep. And that was yeah. kind of a reassuring thought. Yeah. Even those nights um, when I thought like, I will not sleep. Every single time I would sleep. Sometimes I barely slept for four or five days. But the sixth day I would sleep because you have no time to think. You're that tired that, you're, that you don't ha have time to think. And every time, time that happened, I was thinking, you see, sleep life will always win. Yeah. And um, when I told you in the bedtime app uh, that I fell pregnant, you also said um, that the body knows how to create arms and legs inside of a female's body. So people also know how to sleep because we're just wired like this. And that was also something that I reminded myself of every single night. Like my body knows how to create a baby. So my body knows how to be able to fall asleep. <laughs> so Absolutely. yeah, instead of those negative thoughts, I was trying to think about, yeah, logical things. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know when, when I know from experience talking to, to so many people like yourself, Naomi, that things are tend to be like kind of fuzzy and you never really know, but I know a lot of people in the audience will be like, okay, so when did it really change for Naomi? When did you, when did the, when did you feel like, okay, now I probably don't have insomnia. Now it's in the past. Like what, what, what would you answer to that? Uh, well, I would say after those nine months of being pregnant and I didn't touch anything, no supplements, no sleeping pills, no nothing. That was for me the point that I thought I can do this. Like, yeah. there were so many nights that I was afraid in my pregnancy that I would not sleep, that I would go back to the sleeping pills, but it really never, never happened. And when I had my baby, <laughs> I thought like, I, I just beat insomnia. For me, that was the point that I thought that I just, I beat insomnia. And even, when I had my baby, I was afraid for the nights with a newborn. Like, am I being able to sleep? I will be so tired. Can I take care of my baby? What if I cannot sleep? But if you have a newborn, you're just so tired the whole day that you just, those moments, those hours that you can rest, you don't care if you sleep. You're happy that you can rest and that leads to sleep eventually. So even at first I was afraid during my pregnancy that I could not sleep. Then I was afraid during the newborn stage that I could not, not sleep. Eventually I slept. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, 
I think I can say that I'm not afraid of insomnia anymore. And it's been almost a year that I didn't touch sleeping pills or supplements or whatsoever. And it's almost been five months that I didn't watch a video of you anymore. <laughs> so that's yeah. how I can say that I'm over insomnia. And sometimes when I watch videos, it used to trigger me a bit. Like I get a bit of anxious, like, can I go back to that place? But well, it did not happen anymore. So I think when you asked me, when was the point that you were not afraid of insomnia anymore? I think that was after my pregnancy. Yeah. Because I I really didn't think I could do it, but I did. Yeah. Wow. And the body knows how to, so. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for sharing this. And, um, you know, there was one thing that I, I, I wanted to touch on, you know, because, you know, you're an athlete and a lot of people yeah. are very afraid of like, you know, I, I'm an athlete and if I don't sleep, uh, I'm not going to perform. And, yeah. you know, of course we all feel tired when we don't sleep less, but on the other hand, like you're also in one way living proof that you can actually perform at a very high level, even if you have some sleep struggles. But what, what are your thoughts yeah. on this? I don't know, when, when I slept bad, I still could perform in a way because my adrenaline was just so to the roof. <laughs> but I also think that was a reason that I could not sleep at night because, because of that adrenaline. Like the same adrenaline that I had on the football pitch that, that gives you um, the motivation to go for it. It was the same adrenaline that I had at night. So I think you can use that adrenaline even when you haven't slept for a day, you can still perform. That's you I'm the living proof of it. Like I've did this for five, six years. And I if you ask anybody like, um, do you know that Naomi had trouble sleeping? They probably would say no. Exactly. Like I was the only person um that yeah, that would know. But Sometimes I would tell my trainer, like, I did not sleep well. And they, um, I could do, like, an exercise less or something. So that helped a bit, but still not ideal. But if you have, like, a big uh, tournament or a big race or something, like, if you don't sleep, it doesn't really matter because adrenaline will eventually take over. And after that, it will all settle because you're probably exhausted. Yeah. And you will sleep. But... I could do it for five or six years. <laughs> Not that I felt great. So people who have like a race or anything, they they will be fine. <laughs> just yeah. don't just expect that you probably won't sleep your best before a big race and then you will already feel better before it starts. That's great. That's great. And in um maybe two more questions I have. One is um well three more questions actually. I, I I said I would add this to every interview, which was something that you touched upon, but I still want to ask it. And it's, did you at any point feel like I'm a hopeless case? I'm never going to get better. Yes. Like exactly one year ago, I thought my thoughts were really bad. I was like, if I cannot beat, it, beat this insomnia, I don't even want to be around anymore. Like nobody understands me. I didn't know what to do. I felt so hopeless and you really feel lonely with it. Like every time you tell somebody, they say like, what do you mean you cannot sleep? And I didn't find a solution. Like even when I went to like a psychologist or they did not understand what I was talking about. Yeah. And it made me feel like I was being crazy. Like at that point, I maybe didn't step for five days or something and I was taking every sleeping medicine in the book even to a point that i was saying like i don't want to be around anymore like it it got that bad mm -hmm. so i could say that's like a hopeless case yeah I just, thanks for sharing that because i i've added that question because so many people watch these interviews and they think like oh well naomi didn't have it as bad as me but like hearing your story now, it, it, it highlights that it, it, you had a, yeah. you know, obviously very, very difficult time. Yeah, <laughs> very difficult. Yeah, I think I was in that place also. 
Like I watched those recovery stories and I was like, how can people not be afraid of wakefulness anymore? I truly, truly, truly didn't understand how they could not be afraid of wakefulness anymore. Um, I also listened to Alina, yeah, uh, the other sleep coach, and she told me that it took her also like a year or something um, to really get past it. Um, yeah, I would not set any time uh, if you want to get past insomnia because just let it be. Like eventually, you will get um, past it. And also, um, I didn't really see any progress um, in the beginning, but there is progress. There's always progress, even if you don't see it. Well said. And and another one, um, if you could, you know, travel back in time to when you, uh, you know, were having a lot of difficulty sleeping and tell yourself something that you know now, what would you pick? Um, that you should trust your body and that sleep drive eventually will always win. Like, I think it's also a big part of trusting yourself, like knowing you're able to do it. And even those nights that you're like crying in your bed that you cannot sleep, just be kind to yourself. And that's that it is okay to feel or think whatever yeah, is crossing in your mind. And yeah, just go through it every single time and you will see that sleep drive will always win. <laughs> nice, nicely said, absolutely. And finally, um, do you find that, you know, you learn things from this journey that, you know, it is helpful outside of, you know, outside of sleep and in life in general? Um, yeah, I'm thinking, sorry. Like, <laughs> I think uh, just to trust myself. Yeah. That, but that's a bit the same as what I said. Now, when I see like my baby sleeping at night, I think like we were all born with a sleep drive, like we were all born with the capability of sleeping. Yeah. I look at him and I think, yeah, everybody is born with the capability to sleep. So <laughs> that's what I learned. Um, I yeah, right now. Yeah. Sounds really good. Well, uh, this is super helpful. Um, so many people will really benefit from from hearing your story. Very inspirational. And uh, I'll just say that thanks so much. Uh, for, for being a guest today, Naomi, and, and we'll be in touch, okay? You're welcome. Yes. All right. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Coach Daniel, and I hope you are feeling excited right now because you're so close to the finish line of insomnia. And if you found that aha moment you've been looking for in this video, please share it with the world. Because, you know, insomnia can be such a lonely and isolating place before you find our community. Speaking of which... If you would like some more personalized support on your journey, then head over to thesleepcoachschool.com. We have free and paid courses available with certified sleep coaches who have seen the worst of insomnia, left the struggle, and now are ready to help you. If you decide to join, we look forward to seeing you on the other side.